All right. So I want to just challenge your brain a little bit. Again, there's more here that is, <laughs> out, outside. So are you worried? <laughs> outside the scope. <laughs> um, but it's fun to think through. Um, and this is somebody that I saw with Andrea, actually. And um, just really interesting that to put the pieces together. Of course, I put her on the spot because she, she loves and hates that all at the same time. But here we go. So this is a 62-year-old active woman. She has pain in the left SI joint and up to the iliac crest. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, so it's, she complains of pain from here that goes up and over here, kind of. Oh. That's, that's the pain. No pain in the front of the hip at all. Yeah. Um, she has a history of dancing and teaches some dance. She, she also still dances herself, ballroom. Um, and she also walks, bikes, and hikes. She has arthritis on the left knee, on the same side, so left, left, mostly managed with PT exercises but she does have some stiffness in that left knee. She does Pilates mat classes on Zoom three times a week. She also does one private a week on equipment. She's been seeing a body worker to help. And at first she was getting a lot better. He was adjusting her alignment and saying that her pelvis was not in good alignment. Um, lately though, the pain has become more constant. It's three out of 10 pain is what she describes. So it's not a huge amount of pain, but it never goes away. Sitting still, doing nothing, she has no pain. That's the only time, but anytime she's up on her legs, she has some pain. So the pain is mostly when she's standing on the right leg, lifting the le left leg behind her as in an arabesque. She also has pain with any rotation of the left leg to the right when unweighted. So that is in, um, she described it as in standing, taking this leg across, that was super painful. Um, and then also um, if she was to lie down and take the leg across, that would be painful in, in that same area, SI area up to the iliac crest from the back. Um, she has uh, a super tight rectus femoris. In stance, her posture is with a slight, the left anterior rotation of the whole left side. So her stance is a little bit, like this. So like I'll exaggerate so you can see it, but it's kind of like that. And her right foot is just slightly forward of her left. That's a big exaggeration. She doesn't look like that, but that's the feeling. This left hip, the left shoulder, the left torso is all a little bit rotating forward. Um, so that's what she looks like. Um, I should, I could tell you a little bit more. When I had her lie down and I had her externally rotate her hips and then internally rotate her hips. And when she went to do that on the left versus the right in both directions, she was limited and she couldn't even stabilize. So if she went to externally rotate the left hip, the right, like in a figure four, the right side came up with her. She couldn't stabilize the right side down meaning she was trying to move the hip, but it was moving her SI joint, not her hip. Um, and then going into internal rotation, she felt, she said it feels really uh, congested in there when she would try to internally rotate the hip. So that was a discovery as well. So what do you think might be going on with her? Or what, I shouldn't say that. I should say, what things would you want to know? Or is there any other questions you'd want to ask? Other than what the heck is going on? <laughs> um, how does she feel with her legs in tabletop? She's actually okay with her legs in tabletop. Yeah, was no discomfort there an extension like extension a uh like what we didn't do swan so i don't know if upper extension what happened there mm -hmm. we don't know what about this and this is how i broke it down for myself there here there were three areas i was concerned with if there are three areas you would be concerned with what would they be in her case 
uh, lower back. Yeah. Um, pelvis. Yeah, a pel a side joint, a SI pelvis joint. SI joint. Mm -hmm. um, Let's say and the, 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 the hip, hip joint? joints, the hip joint itself. Yeah. Exactly. So those were the three that I automatically went, okay, there's something going on and I need to try and see if I can sort out what might be going on of those three things. Exactly. Yeah. And so then, um, there was a big key in my discussion with her. I started asking some questions. I didn't get the information. I was trying to figure out um, so if you have three areas of concern, what are the structures in those areas you might be concerned with? Because I was trying to figure out what structures might I be concerned with for her? Discs. Discs in the back, sure. Yeah. What, what about the SI joint? What structures could I be concerned with there? The ligaments. Ligaments, yeah, definitely. What else? muscles. Yeah, the, the glutes. glutes. Exactly, the glutes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to the back one more. We said discs in the back. What else could we be concerned about in the back? Um, QL or lats. Mm -hmm. Muscle, QL, potential lat or thoracolumbar fascia. Okay, and there's another structure that we would want to oh. be if there's a rotation in the vertebrae or something. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Rotation, structural, st so structural joint rotation, great. Mm -hmm. And one more thing. Compression, but that's not a structure, but. Ner nerves are a, a, nerves are a structure. So oh. the nerves, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys, that was too obvious. You couldn't find it because it was too obvious. Right, so I would be concerned about the joints, the muscles, the nerves really in the lumbar, in the, in the sacral or uh, uh, pelvis region. I'd be concerned about the ligaments and muscles. I agree. Mm -hmm. And our third was the hip. What could we be concerned about in the hip? Well, she might be, the, the femur might be worn. I mean, she might be in need of a replacement. I mean, Mm -hmm. So osteoarthritis, we could be concerned with, yeah. yeah. What else? So that would be bony structure or, or bony labrum. integrity. The labrum, labrum mm -hmm. would be a structure I'd be worried about. Yeah. And what is the other structure I might be worried about in the hip? You said it for the SI joint. Ligaments? Ligaments. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we have, so those, that's a lot of stuff we got to figure out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yes, that, that was the checkoff list in the brain. Mm -hmm. So what, I, what I always try and do is rule out things that I know it can't be, or it doesn't seem not that I never know that it can't be, but it doesn't seem likely mm -hmm. like take for in the back. If you wanted to know if it was nerve or not, what good question could you ask her? about the symptoms that would give you information about the nerve. Um, because her complaint of pain is not in her back. I guess really. I, uh, I'd ask if the pain was worse in different positions. In the, right. right. And if, it, if it was a, if it was a um, disc or something, yeah. where would you expect the pain to be? Would it be where she described or would it be? Probably not. Probably not. It'd probably be right at the location of the disc, right? So. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So disc may not be the most likely. What about nerve? Where if, if it was nerve pain, what would we expect to see? Probably radiating pain. Maybe radiating. <laughs> Yeah, I would expect to see radiation and you can definitely have low back symptoms going into the SI joint area, but those symptoms usually are going right SI joint area and downward, not usually going SI joint and up and over the iliac crest. 
It could be, but not usually. It's not the usual pattern. And we would expect her complaints to be a little bit different, I think. Uh, I think we would expect her to really talk more about burning or um, pain that comes on more at night. You know, I think there would be other complaints if it was nerve that didn't seem to quite fit this, but, but it could be. So we can't totally rule that out, but it doesn't seem as likely. And then muscles in the back, if we were going muscular in the back or fascia in the back, where would that pain most likely be? In the back. In the back. And that wasn't really her complaint. So my low back went low on the total totem pole for looking at her low back because of those things. So then if we go to SI joint, uh, what, and I think let's, I was having a hard time really differentiating SI joint from hip joint. Why? Because they often refer into each other. Um, but what information did she give us that makes it seem like SI joint is a likely candidate? I would have said it radiates to the front, but. Um, I was thinking about the, when you bring the leg over for like an IT band stretch, because that's mm -hmm. really pulling on it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that one, and there was one other thing that really made me go, hmm, interesting. I'm trying to remember. Things. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, so if if um, here is the one thing: if we're looking at SI joint, we're looking at muscles, right, versus structure, alignment, um, and ligament. So, yes, I totally agree. And and joint, right? So it could be destabilized by the leg going across midline. Absolutely. Um, she said that when. She was saying, yeah, oh yeah. Cause I said, what about when you're dancing? What do you feel like? Like if you go into an arabesque, she's like, oh yeah, that really yeah. hurts. And I said, mm -hmm. I said, I said on the stance leg when you're standing left. And she's like, no, when I'm lifting the left leg. Right, yeah. does she have a tear or something? Or Where? Uh, I think you said back somewhere in the front, maybe even in the obliques. I don't Ooh, know. I didn't think about that, but that is an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's a good idea, uh, but I, I didn't think about that. I thought more about, I was thinking, okay, if she st told you that you stand on that leg and that leg hurts, and we're thinking about muscle, what muscle, if you stand on the leg and it hurts and you're having to lift another leg and the stance leg hurts, what muscle do you think about primarily? Lip need. Glute med. That was so. That's what I had in my head. Is she's standing on it? There's some tearing in glute med fibers. That was not the case because she's standing on it, and that stance like feels great when she's standing on it. But it's hurting her when she's standing on the right and lifting the leg. So if we went muscular on that, what what muscles are the ones that are going to be the problem muscles? Glutes, glutes, glute max. Glute max and glute minimus, right? Yeah, the two yeah. of them. And glute max is pretty hard to tear. So without like a big event, she might have some glute max fibers torn, but it may be glute minimus and that can cause a lot of pain too. Mm. So if we went muscular, she gave me that information, which I can be pretty confident that if there was tearing in glute media, she wouldn't like standing on that leg. Yeah. And she also said that uh, it was when the leg, taking it across when she's unweighted, not when she's weighted that caused the discomfort. So it makes me think it's not about glute medius. It's really about something else. And arabesque is glute max, glute min, exactly. So we have to keep those in mind. Um, the other, what else happens? So there's another piece of information in here that kind of brought on a light bulb for me. And that is that she's a very tight rectus femoris. Stretching uh, the psoas. So psoas comes to mind. And so I asked her, do you think that it's hard for you to lift yourself in arabesque because you have a tight, do you have a tight, I said, do you have tight hips in the front? And she said, very tight. And I said, what about your quads? She goes, oh my gosh, my quads are so tight. And so then I went, 
light bulb, <laughs> right? Again. So then what do you think I did next after that information? I watched her do something. Quad stretch? Walk? I didn't walk. <laughs> I watched her walk. Because yeah. what am I looking for if I walk? If she has a tight rectus, yeah. it hurts her to take the leg behind unweighted. Right. The I game. wanted to see exactly. And yeah. what yeah. am I looking for specifically in that gait pattern? To see if she, um, how far back her leg can be without discomfort. So does she walk with a shuffle or does she have a, a gait? Okay, good. So I'm going to show you if I can how she walked. Let's see if I can mimic it well enough and get you enough camera angle here to see it. Okay, not very much space, but I'll try and show you. So her gait was like the, I'm going to exaggerate, but it was like this. Oh, kind of marchy. Marchy and her. She did something, she was landing on a pretty flat foot. And then I thought, is it because I have you in a small space? So I had her walk down the hall, further space. And she ended up going a little bit more to the balls of her feet, but her knees still traveled outside. Ooh, up and out. So she actually never took that leg behind her. Ah. Yes. So that never taking that leg behind her told me that, okay, wait, we're never going there in gait pattern. So we're restricted somehow. She's restricted somehow with that. So then I did, did I put this in here? I laid her on her back and I said, I gotta see what's going on at the hips, right? Because if she doesn't, is there a reason why she's not moving the hips? Or is it because that left knee is kind of hurting her and maybe osteoarthritic um, that she walks that funny? So I laid her down on her back and I said, let me just see if, if there's no difference side to side on the hips, then I'm not gonna worry about her hips so much, right? I'll go right to that SI joint. So I laid her down, I had her do external rotation. And I told you that and internal rotation, external rotation, internal rotation is both limited on the left side, mm -hmm. both external and internal rotation. Yeah. So then I start thinking what that what would limit that? Um, Not the SI joint, right? Rotator. <laughs> Rotators. Rotators could be limiting. Um, the joint itself could be limiting. I, you know, I don't know what it is that's actually limiting it, other than she feels congested in there. So I'm assuming there's some inflammation going on in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty easy assumption to make that there's something at the hip. If she had full regular range of motion at that hip versus the other, and it felt, or she had a little less range of motion, but it felt totally normal to her, then I wouldn't worry so much about it. But there's, there wasn't the same and it didn't feel the same. It felt limited to her and felt a little uncomfortable. So I then put her into a little bit of traction on that hip and she was like, oh my gosh, this feels wonderful. So that was sort of the, if it was um, tear, torn muscles and I pulled apart the hip joint like that, those muscles would probably not like it so much because they're going on stretch, right? But if it's compression in the joint or inflammation in the joint and you pull it apart, it's people go, ah, oh, that is so much better. Just it feels so good to have that relief, yeah? So, um, so that's kind of where I left her is with, um, with some stretching for the hip in that lengthening position. I left her with um, hips on. Well, I should tell you, what, what would you do to open up her rectus? Well, hips on the roller to do- Hips on the roller, doing what? Stretch, hip flexor stretch. Okay, so passive hip flexor stretch on the roller. That would get which muscle more than the other? So as. So as. And what if you thought her rectus was more tight? Um, bend the knee, quad stretch, yeah, bend the knee, quad stretch. Bend the knee, put the foot down, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and this is somebody now, let's go back to how active she is. 
She's riding a bike. She's hiking. Uh, she's also a dancer. Uh, and she's been doing Pilates and working with a body worker. So what are your thoughts knowing all of that about stretching? What kind of stretching might she be missing? Just, I'm thinking just long holds, gentle long hold stretching. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think she would need some longer holding. What is another way to stretch that could be a really good benefit to her? Eccentric if she's work. sorry, go ahead. Eccentric work. Eccentric, eccentric work mm, could could really help her. Yes, could really help her strengthen, slowing down her steps, controlling her body. Um, absolutely. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking about if she um, were to actively stretch versus passively stretch. So. Somebody who has an imbalance like that, a big enough imbalance, sometimes the passive stretching isn't enough, I'm finding. And so I like to use also active stretching. And somebody with an SI joint issue um, with super tight anything, rectus, piriformis, any of them being super tight, right? it's gonna pull on that SI joint if it's already unstable and make it worse. Um, so I want to not just release the muscles and let her just be there. I want to have it be an act, sometimes an active release. So my favorite one for the quads is what you guys said is hips on the roller, butt on the roller, feet, knees bent, feet on the floor. And then I ask them to coccyx curl, but not lift the pelvis because I don't want her sacrum hanging in the air while she's trying to stretch the quads off of it, right? So I don't want there to be some chance that she's gonna pull one side more than the other. So I keep her sacrum on the roller, pull those legs in as much as she can and ask her to coccyx curl there. And that opens up those quads. And then as she gets more flexible, I can have her slide her feet closer and closer to her bottom and get more of a quad stretch. So I think the passive stretching with a long hold, absolutely. But I also think in this case, the glutes firing might help and her being on that roller might help stabilize the sacrum, the SI joint. So then I can stretch the quads off of that. And I'm using my glutes and my hamstrings to help stretch, turn off the quad, that active inhibition, right? I'm, I, I'm inhibiting it from using the glutes. I'm not allowing the quads to fire and forcing that into a stretch. Are sure. you stretching while you're talking? <laughs> Just hard to sit so long mm -hmm. I'm sitting. yes <laughs> said from a pilates instructor herself because we don't sit very much <laughs> yeah so that's yeah we're all fidgety <laughs> i know um does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So I, I left her with that. And then um, what I also left her with is that I wanted her to be re become really stable for the next two weeks to really be working on stability. So I asked her not to go on hikes, but to walk. I told her she when she goes on her bike rides, she has an electric bike and she said she uses it to help her ride uphill. And I said, fine, if you're seated and you're using assist to go uphill, keep riding your bike. Don't stand in the pedals. And we talked about sitting and standing on two feet, keeping balance. And I also recommended that she has an SI joint belt for the two weeks to keep her contained in that pelvis. And then the exercise, what exercises would you start her with? I mean, I, I probably, well, we did, we said the hips on the roller, the coccyx curls, that, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, glute series. Mm -hmm. Yes, big yeah. yes. Yeah, nothing too, mm -hmm. too crazy to start, but you know, okay. regular glute series. Yeah, the heel what squeeze. would you, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Genevieve, yeah. I was gonna say the heel squeezes in particular for the. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. for that activation. And what exercises, so she's doing Zoom Pilates three days a week. What exercise, not with us. <laughs> so what exercises would you tell her not to do? 
scooter. Mm -hmm. She's using her phone. Um, it's actually Matt. It's Matt Pilates, sorry, on Zoom. But yes, I agree. Um, we're doing glute series swimming legs. Not to do. Not to do. Not to do a pose. So what, what are you telling us not to do? Because you have the right, the right idea. Um, opposing directions with the legs. So legs, yep. circles. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. What else is something that you probably aren't even thinking about it because you wouldn't do it in our classes, but what uh, other thing would be contraindicated for the SI joint? Well, roll over, roll ups. Yep. So yeah. roll ups though, I mean, just rolling up, would that be contraindicated when you're this one? Yeah, <laughs> why is it? Head, I wouldn't want her to do. Mm -hmm. I think butt overhead would actually be the easier one okay. than rolling up. Why, um, what happens when you slouch on the sacrum, which is basically roll or roll over the sacrum? You're putting pressure. Yep, and what happens to the SI joint? It's present. It's spreads out, yep. So if there's a ligamentous issue back there, she's putting <laughs> load. <laughs> get off your sacrum she's putting load right and stretching those ligaments and if we're wondering if there's a ligamentous tear in there and we don't want it to be aggravated then I really don't want her stretching those ligaments and causing them to pull more right in fact if she's unstable at her SI joint I want those ligaments to tighten up as much as possible and consistent three times a week rolling over that is just pulling them apart so I actually don't want her rolling. So we had this conversation also. I said, she says, can I keep doing my Pilates class? And I said, well, yes, but there's a lot of, there's some things I wouldn't want you to do. And I started listening and she's like, oh, oh, she was, I don't know if I can modify it. Cause a lot of the classes, are all those things <laughs> I'm like, well, then maybe you just do your own program yeah. for a little bit. And she was like, I think I will, because I said, it might be good. Cause we won't know what's bothering and what's not bothering you. So yeah. Yeah, so she, um, because, and I, and forward, seated forward bend, all of those things that make the sacrum slouch a little bit are loading and pulling on those ligaments potentially. Yeah, so then in studio, you already said one scooter is one you wouldn't do. What else wouldn't you do? Feet and straps. Feet and straps. Would you do it on the, in at this stage, would you do it on the springboard or not even? Probably not yet. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do circles. Maybe up down. Maybe, maybe up down if she gets there. Yeah. Would you do single legged footwork? Nope. Apparently no not. single legged footwork. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's that opposing um, force. And the opposing force, which can cause a shear on the SI joint if it's unstable. Mm -hmm. So. I told her for two weeks, let's just go with this for two weeks, right? Um, and let's see how, if you get any improvement. If you get some improvement, then we know we're on the right track. If you get zero improvement, then we need you to go in and have an MRI or, or something to have more studies done. Because if it's not partially an instability, and I gave her some exercise for her hip to unload the hip. So if it's not either one or if it's not enough, my, my other thought was how do I know what caused what? Where did this problem start? I, mean, I, I don't really know the answer to that, but I just have to keep trying to extract information and look at it. It may be, she's a dancer, right? So it may be that there was a hip injury a long time ago that just has gotten progressively worse over time, like maybe some labrum tearing or some ligamentous tearing. And the SI joint, because the hip is less mobile and she's asking for big motion still at 63 from that hip, that it finally um, got, she compensated by using the SI joint to protect the hip. And so it finally got so much that she's really compensating a lot and it's destabilized SI joint. So that could be the scenario. The scenario could also be that she has an SI joint instability and that she overuses the hip, loads the hip too much. Right. You know, I, I really won't know the answer to that until we know if there's actually something going on at the hip itself beyond 
beyond just being tired and having an osteoarthritic knee below it and, and having a little bit of a poor mechanic. Her IT vents are also tight. So having the knees out when she's walking also could be part of that, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, there you have it. Oh. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, thank you. Thank you for the big puzzle. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Brain working. <laughs>